This first product is an electrocardiogram, uh, which measures your heart rate by picking up the electrical signals at your heart. Uh, it's sort of out of style now, I guess the hip thing to do these days is to shine a light through one of your fingers and then pick it up at the other side with the light sensor. And you can also pick up your blood oxygen level by checking to see which wavelengths are absorbed more or less. Uh, but I'm going to be sticking with ECG for now uh, instead, partly because I think it's cooler uh, to pick up the actual electrical signals of the heart instead of uh, just using a light sensor. Uh, and also because it's similar to EMG and EEG, which I might want to play with eventually. Uh, I first saw this project on Scott W. Harden's blog. Uh, it's one of his more popular projects, uh, so I'm going to be using his circuit as a starting point. Uh, I've done this once before, so I'll probably show some old data too. Um, but I never really got around to finishing it. Uh, so I'm starting over from scratch and documenting everything, uh, and hopefully by the end of it I'll have a reasonably well-designed ECG on a nice little PCB. Alright, I'm going to talk a little bit about the circuit that I'll be starting with, which is a uh, non-inverting amplifier made with a single op amp. Uh, I won't go into detail about how the circuit works because it's pretty simple, uh, but I might make some extra videos about op amp circuits, uh, just for those who don't know. Uh, up here is the circuit that Scott started with, and I'm going to point out a couple of things that I think are wrong with it. Uh, first of all, on his page he calls it a high gain differential amplifier, uh, but judging by these resistors it looks like it's supposed to be set up as a uh, non-inverting single-ended amplifier. Also he has one of the electrodes connected directly to the minus input of the op amp, uh, instead of being used as a uh, ground reference. Uh, and This might have something to do with why he called it a high gain differential amplifier. Um, for instance, if you drove that input with a voltage source that had little or no source resistance, then that source would completely control the voltage at this node, and at that point the uh, feedback network here would be useless. And then it would be a high gain differential amplifier, but uh, only because at that point it's just an op amp uh, with open loop gain. Uh, now using this as an ECG, there's going to be a lot of resistance in there because of uh, skin and everything, uh, but then the operation of the circuit depends on the value of this resistor, which we don't really control, uh, which is never a really good thing to do in practice. And down here is the circuit that I'll be starting with, uh, which is just a little bit different from Scott's circuit. Uh, I have one of the electrodes going to ground uh, as a ground reference, but I have the same value of feedback resistors, uh, which give it a gain of about 100. I still have the 0.1 microfarad capacitor between the two inputs, and I've added a couple more capacitors, another 0.1 microfarad capacitor across the feedback resistor, and then a really large capacitor uh, at the output. I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the signals that I expect to find at the uh, input of my ECG. Um, obviously, uh, I should hope there's going to be a heartbeat signal in there. Uh, there's also going to be uh, some high frequency radio signals at the input. Uh, my body and the cables are going to act as little antennas, and uh, pick up some radio. The uh, purpose of this capacitor across the inputs of the op amp is actually to act as a short circuit for high frequencies. So any radio signals that, uh, that I pick up uh, should go straight through the capacitor and hopefully not show up as a voltage at the input of the op amp. Now the problem with radio is not the high frequency signal itself, um, because that's pretty easy to filter out. Uh, the problem is if any of the high frequency signal gets into the op amp, uh, which can't be perfectly linear, um, and because it's slightly nonlinear, uh, it's going to demodulate it and it will come out of the output as audio, which is a bit more difficult to filter out from the heartbeat signal, since it's much lower frequency. And it seems like most of my projects also end up being radio receivers because of this. Uh, sometimes it's kind of fun to see which radio stations I can pick up by accident. Uh, next, I expect there to be uh, a lot of 60 hertz at the input, uh, and this will magnetically couple in from the uh, from the power lines in the walls. Uh, and I actually expect this to be the largest component of the signal at the input, judging by what I saw when I did this before. Uh, the 60 hertz is actually going to give me the most grief when I try to to uh, separate it from the heartbeat, uh, because it's going to be so large, and also because it's a uh, much lower frequency than radio, it's going to be more difficult to filter out. Uh, and that's actually the purpose of this capacitor uh, in the feedback network here. Uh, when I did this before, I put this capacitor in the feedback once by accident and I uh, found that that, uh, that helped reduce a little bit of the 60 hertz noise. Uh, and that's because for higher frequencies, uh, this capacitor starts to have a lower and lower impedance 
which reduces the gain of the amplifier. So this amplifier will have a lower gain at 60 Hz than it will at the heartbeat frequency. And finally, I expect there to be a DC offset at the input. There's going to be some DC offset voltage built into the op amp uh, just because of some imperfections in it. Uh, but there could also be uh, another source of DC offset. Uh, I had a friend who did EEG uh, a while back for, um, for brain machine interfacing. And he told me that the uh, electrodes in contact with the skin along with uh, whatever conductive jelly they had in between uh, could actually act as a dry cell battery and uh, generate up to millivolts. I'm not sure whether or not that's true or uh, how much voltage it would actually generate, but that's, uh, that's something else to keep in mind. Now that last capacitor at the output uh, is a DC blocking capacitor, uh, and that's why I want it to be really large, so even low frequencies would be able to pass through it. Uh, now this won't help at all if the uh, DC voltage at the input is so large that it rails the output of the op amp, but I'm also not sure if the uh, microphone input of my computer uh, drives a voltage to bias a microphone or anything, and I don't want to have a, a DC voltage at the output of my circuit fighting with a DC voltage at the input of the computer. Uh, so just to be just to be safe, I added a capacitor there. And here's the circuit all set up. Uh, it looks like a big tangle mess, but it's pretty simple. I'm using one of the op amps from an LM324, and I have a second LM324 in there for later. A couple of pennies as electrodes. Uh, the output at the end of the DC blocking capacitor is clipped into this audio cable, which goes in the back of my computer, and the output of the op amp before the DC blocking capacitor is plugged into this multimeter so I can look the DC offset at the output. Alright, I've got it all hooked up now. Uh, the reference electrode, which is connected to ground, is taped onto the right side of my chest, and the other electrode, the signal electrode, is taped on the left side. Uh, the reason I'm taking a video of my monitor instead of uh, using a screen recorder is that I can also get the uh, multimeter here in the shot uh, so you can take a look at the DC offset. Uh, the software I'm using is Audacity. Uh, I'm using it mostly because it's free uh, and also it runs on Linux which is nice. Uh, so let's get this turned on and start recording. All right, You can see I already have a uh, DC offset there. Let's take a look and see what happens. Well, imagine that. It looks like a bunch of 60 hertz. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is that I can sort of control the uh, DC offset and the amount of 60 hertz that I pick up uh, by pushing on the electrodes a bit, uh, mostly the uh, reference electrode. Seems like the harder I push, uh, the better connection it gets, and uh, the more it rejects the 60 hertz and uh, lowers that DC offset. So I'll just take a nice long capture like this. Uh, and then I'll stop it when I feel like I have enough and I'll start playing with it. Uh, I feel like there should be plenty of data here, so uh, I'm going to try and pull a uh, heartbeat signal out of all this garbage here. Uh, I'm going to take a uh, nice long section there and copy it into a new track so that I don't mess up the original data when I start playing with it. All right, and now this just turns into an episode of CSI where we uh, zoom in and enhance until we magically get all the information that we want. So let's start by amplifying. That's the zoom in part. Uh, and it's probably going to be impossible to tell uh, from the video of the monitor, uh, but you can sort of see uh, little lumps uh, in here, uh, just about one every second. And I think those are the droids we're looking for. So let's enhance. And we do that with a low-pass filter. I'll set the uh, cutoff frequency to 30 hertz, and uh, that should do a pretty good job of rejecting a whole lot of that 60 hertz noise while uh, leaving the heartbeat signal mostly intact. All right, let's amplify it again, and then enhance, and then zoom in and enhance. That's starting to be a bit more obvious here. Uh, you can see I sort of have little gaps here and spikes uh, where those lumps were earlier. Um, so I'm starting to get the heartbeat signal amplified a bit more and that uh, 60 hertz rejected a bit more. Uh, now sometimes the filtering will cause some of the samples on the end to blow up. Here I have uh, some samples uh, already at full scale so it won't amplify anymore. Uh, so I just have to grab those and silence them. Now we should be able to amplify the rest of it back up to full scale. There we go, low pass filtering. 
and amplifying, and this all gets pretty tedious. I'll just low pass filter this a few more times. Now it's looking pretty good. Let's amplify it one more time. There we go. Now let's uh, zoom in a little bit in time. There we are. That looks nice. Uh, it looks uh, that looks just like a uh, classic ECG signal that you would expect to see printed out on paper. Uh, and there's my fridge compressor starting up. Uh, like this video if you like cold beverages, and subscribe if you live in a small apartment. And like I said earlier, I have some old data to show too, and that's what this screenshot is. The top track is raw data, and the, uh, the bottom three tracks are uh, some interesting sections that I pulled out. Uh, and actually only the bottom two tracks are interesting. The second track from the top is uh, just a bunch of 60 hertz that I pulled out. Uh, so just in case you don't know what 60 hertz sounds like, it sounds like this. So that gets pretty annoying after a while. Uh, now obviously last time I had a lot more 60 hertz. Uh, now that could be because I was closer to the power cables in the wall, or maybe my fridge compressor turned on or something like that. The third track down from the top is, uh, I think, the most interesting track here. Uh, it's another way that I managed to uh, pull a heartbeat signal out of this circuit. Now what happened here was, I used uh, my control over the DC offset by uh, pushing on that uh, reference electrode uh, to push the DC offset all the way down to ground. Uh, and if I got the offset just right, uh, every once in a while the uh, peaks of the heartbeat signal would push the 60 hertz noise up above ground. Uh, and I would end up with uh, bursts of 60 hertz at the output, uh, wherever the peaks in the heartbeat signal were. Uh, and that sounds pretty cool. It sounds like this. Uh, it was actually pretty difficult to get the circuit to, uh, to work in that mode. Uh, I needed to get the DC offset just right. Uh, and also have a pretty strong heartbeat signal and a whole lot of 60 hertz. Uh, I only managed to get it to work a couple of times like that, uh, but it looked pretty cool when it did. Uh, and this is really why I wanted to show this old data, because I, uh, I couldn't get my circuit to uh, work in this mode again. Uh, now the track on the bottom was just for fun. Uh, I just took a big blank section from the, from the recording, and I just amplified the hell out of it, like over 9000 dB or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and this is what I got out of it. Uh, now the output of my circuit is braille at this point, uh, so I'm pretty sure the, uh, the radio wasn't being demodulated by my circuit. Uh, I think it was actually being picked up by the audio cable running into the computer, uh, and then demodulated in the sound card. Uh, so here's the recording from this time again, uh, and it's pretty clear that it worked, uh, but it didn't work nearly as well as I wanted it to. What I want is to look at my heartbeat in real time, uh, without having to do any uh, amplification and filtering afterwards. So it's pretty obvious that, first of all, I'm going to need a lot more gain. Uh, I had to do a whole bunch of amplification just to see the heartbeat in there at all. Uh, the problem is that the 60 hertz noise is a lot stronger than the heartbeat signal that I'm trying to measure, uh, so I'm going to have to reject the 60 hertz before I even start amplifying the heartbeat signal. Uh, now it's possible to do that with filtering circuits, but I think it would be a lot more effective to do it with a uh, differential amplifier instead. Uh, so that's what I'll start out with in my next video. Uh, so that's where I'll leave off for this video, and uh, next time I should have a much better circuit.